Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest with us. It's Kathy Burns. And Kathy is a board-certified um, expert in the field of organization. She's helped many, many companies and people one-on-one -on -one, um, help them to um, learn how to organize and improve their skills so they can actually excel in business. So, Kathy, why don't you tell people a little about yourself and what you do? Oh, hi, Stacey. First off, hello, everybody out there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Kathy Burns. And as Stacey said, I'm a board certified professional organizer. And what that means is I help uh, businesses and homeowners create systems for success. Um, I started a long time ago as a travel writer and a boat captain. I learned how to live really small. And I also realized that people get kind of attached to their stuff and attached to the systems that they have in process. And so my goal is always to add space and create the underlying systems in people's either their business or their life so that they can get more done with less stress and most importantly, less overwhelm. Yes. You know, there's so many people out there that people don't realize it, but when you declutter either your office or your home, you become more focused and you're able to accomplish more, don't you think? Absolutely. People don't realize how much the distractions are distracting them, like just a little pile over in the corner silently screams at us for our attention. And not only that, even if we're not aware of that, when we glance at it, it's, it's a, a kind of a thing of like things left undone. So it's like, mm -hmm. oh, you need to do that, need to do that. And then, you know, you can't really focus on the on the task at hand or whatever you're working on at the at the present time. So that probably stresses people out when they have all that clutter, piles and piles of stuff all over the place. It probably, you know, just looking at it itself, you know, causes stress to the individual, probably, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. Stress, it, it starts out with stress and then it turns into overwhelm when there's too many and people can't decide where to start. And that's basically when I get called as, in, as a pro organizer is people are in overwhelm and they know they have to do something, but they don't know where to begin. And that's always the kicker is where should I start? It's too overwhelming, right? Oh, definitely. And how would you suggest that people should begin? What would you be some suggestions if people really have a lot of clutter either in their house or their office? You know, what's a good way to start the process of organization? Well, the best place to start is with the area that's bothering you the most. And if it seems overwhelming at the time, just start boxing up the stuff in that area so that you can start to make sense of it. You know, if you can box like with like and then sort it later, uh, but always start uh, with the area that's really bothering you. And that way you'll feel a sense of accomplishment, mm -hmm. even if it means putting stuff in boxes and moving it away from that area, that's going to give you that Okay, now I can breathe. Now I can think. And then I can hit one box at a time, perhaps, and just try to make sense of what's in that box. And, and the question to ask is, you know, do I need it? Do I use it? Do I love it? If right. you don't need it, you don't need it. If right. you don't use it, you still don't need it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and some things you just love, but you don't use them or need them, but you just love them, you know? Right. And as, as pro-organizers, we never tell you to get rid of everything or just keep the stuff that you uh, don't use, don't need, or don't love. And the things that you use, need, and love need to be right there in your area so that you can actually use them and find them quickly. You know, the idea behind being organized is to be able to find anything within uh, well, especially paper piles within yeah. 30 seconds or less. You know, if you can't find a piece of paper within 30 seconds, you're in trouble because the, the average um, person in business loses three hours a week just trying to find missing documents that they know that they have, but they can't find them. They right. Three hours. That's a lot of time every it's week. A lot of time. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So what about people in offices? You know, they're so busy. They have a, a busy schedule, but they have piles and piles of paper all over the place. When do they find the time to start organizing? You know, how do they go about that? Well, that's the thing. A lot of people feel like they don't have time to get organized, but this is the thing. For every hour that you spend organizing, you get three to 10 hours later. Three hours is conservative. 10 hours is what the optimum is, is what Brian Tracy and a lot of people have determined at this point. So yeah. you might think you don't have time to get organized or you don't have time to deal with your paper piles, but you get it back in spades. So if you take just a few hours to try organizing your papers, you'll get three to 10 times that amount of time back. 
guaranteed it happens every single time and people are always in disbelief going well i just don't have time to get organized you don't have time not to get organized quite honestly right. you know and organizing isn't necessarily fun unless you're doing with the pro or you're doing it in a group setting uh you know just doing it all by yourself is not that much fun i have to admit yeah. <laughs> having a support team or a support person behind you to do it will just help you get it done much much quicker now, how do you help people to get organized? Are you, are, do you go into the, into the actual facility or do you teach them step-by-step step, different techniques on how they can begin the organization process? Uh, yes, I do it all. So uh, you can see me in person. You can see me in group trainings. You can see me in webinars. In fact, I have a webinar coming up on March 14th. It's called the Get It Gone Formula. And it's going to help you turn your piles into files and your papers into profits. So this webinar is completely free. So right. for those of you who are thinking, ah, I really need to do something about this, join me on the webinar. There's no obligation, but in an hour, I'm going to show you the three main mistakes that entrepreneurs use that sabotage their business, mm -hmm. things that they can do to get out of that saboteur relationship with their stuff and their surroundings. Right. And uh, and that will be one way that you can you can check me out for free. Just, you know, for a whole hour, I'm going to give you training. Right. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. Now, do people, you know, is it best to throw out a lot of stuff or is it best to start filing things because you might need it is, you know, what would you suggest? I love that, but you might need it. I have one of my colleagues, another professional board certified organizer. She wrote a, a book. I might need it someday, but I might need it someday. So uh, what happens with the uh, get it gone formula is once you start organizing your papers, you realize First off, you have to know, what do you need? How long do you need to keep it? A lot right. of times we keep stuff because we haven't made that decision and, yes. or we don't know. No one teaches us this stuff, especially the IRS and taxes, you know, three yeah. to seven years. What does that mean? <laughs> exactly. So, so anyhow, when you go ready to, when you start organizing your papers, once you know what you know, what you need to know as far as how long to keep them, do I need them, so on and so forth, you end up checking 80% of your papers. Right, so right. when when we go through this workshop training um, after the webinar, people will get rid of 80 percent of their papers. And then every piece of paper that's that's back that they keep in their life is is color coded, alphabetized. It's filed. They know where to find it. They can grab it in 30 seconds. Right, They're on right. top of their projects. So, yeah, I just think it's funny. You said, but we might need it because that's always the kicker. It's like, am I going to need it? Hmm. I don't know, right, right. you know, right. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I think that's one of the biggest things that people, you know, it, it causes people not to throw out things or get rid of things or organize you know, themselves is because that thing in their head, I might need it. Well, you know, same thing in the closet. If you ever see people, sometimes they open their closet and it's totally disorganized because they're like, well, should I throw it out? I might need it, you know, oh, I might wear it. It's still nice, you know, it might come back into style. And, you know, before you know it, you have a clutter closet, you know, and then things start to, then they don't have room in their closet and they start piling things on the floor. And before you know it, it's like, you know, inside your house can become a, like a, you know, a slight hoarders, you know, because, and I've seen people who are neat, but they have baskets all over the place. I've been in homes where they're neat individuals, but they can't throw out. And they end up having basket after basket all over the house and just things piled in the baskets, organized, but just, you know, all those baskets when you come in the house or all those, you know, nice decorated boxes, it's like, whoa, you know. Yeah. And, and baskets are hard because you don't really know what's in them. And yeah. even if if you think you know what's in them when there's when there's so many you're using, think of all the brain power that you're using to try in your hard drive, in your brain to yeah. remember, okay, that basket has shoes, that basket has hats, that basket has, you know, it's just too much memory yes. load for silly stuff like that. Exactly. <laughs> I, I had a client who had a closet outside of her closet, outside of her closet, <laughs> and she cracked me up. She goes, well, I started with this closet outside of my closet because I couldn't get in. So right. I put in some racks. And then, and then I couldn't get to the rack, so I made another closet outside of my closet. And my husband's about ready to go bonkers because now the Chase Lounge is another closet yeah. outside of my closet, outside of my closet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, these things happen. Yeah, they, they definitely do. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm also an image consultant. And I always say I, I, do, I do both because when you get me in a closet, 
it's not like, have you not worn it for a year? It's like, why are you not wearing this? this is perfect for you or you should never be wearing that girl you know so yeah. it's about the colors the lines the shapes and you know every decade we change our style anyhow and That's so perfect. you know get with the program because you're going to change what you like to wear and what feels good to wear as you grow you yeah. can't yeah. save stuff from you know 30 years ago it just doesn't exactly. serve you and they say every seven years you change, like mentally, you know, your mindset changes and you start to like different things and you start to dress differently and you start to do things differently. It's just, it's like they say the every the seven year mindset and it's like, you know, you, you tend to become a different person, you know, and I, I guess the same thing goes with what you're saying, you know, we change as time, you know, evolves and we you have to, you know, as time goes on, I guess we have to take time out to do kind of a, a spring cleaning, even if it's not springtime don't you think yeah. it's so very important to add space to your life and add space wherever you can in your life you know whether it's your closet or your junk drawer or your file system or your office design whatever it is you just need space because with space you can breathe and you yeah. have clarity and when you have clarity you can be on purpose and when you're on purpose that's when you get success yes right? Yes. So if, if you have all this muddled thinking because of the stuff in your environment or the, or maybe the systems are broken, maybe you have contact databases in four places, but right. none of them are talking to each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I've seen people in offices just have piles and piles and piles of stuff, you know, on their desk, behind their desk. And I'm like, how do you know, you know, and they would say it's an organized mess. They would tell me, I know where everything is. And I'm like, I, I don't see how that's possible. You know, do you come across people that have that so-called organized mess? <laughs> well, okay. In 18 years, I have met two successfully professional pilers. Two <laughs> years. Everybody tells me that they think they know where everything is in every pile. But again, it comes. So what if you do? why are you using your brain power to remember all that? Like, right. why, why not use your brain power and your memory capacity for things that are good? Like, you know, uh, whatever your networking pitch or other things that are much more important. Why don't right. you file that in your brain instead of trying to remember what's in every single pile? It's just a waste of waste of your resources, quite honestly. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And I've seen people actually become organized. And then like two, three months later, that pile is, is there again, you know, it, you have to stay consistent, right? It's like a, a lifestyle change. Yeah, it's a lifestyle change. And uh, a lot of people will try to get organized on their own. And this is a plug for pro organizers, I will admit. But when you work with a professional, we help you create sustainable systems. The whole idea on our code of ethics for NAPO is to create sustainable change within the client, not to just go wing, 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 and everything's perfect and then leave them. And right. then, you know, not have them able to take control or understand why the systems are there. They have to be able to sustain them other uh, after the fact. Right. Otherwise, right. we've not done our job. And how it's do you literally do part of our code of ethics. And how do you do that step by step? Like, how do you teach them? Like, what's your method that, you know, that leads them to success when it comes to organization, which leads to time management, which leads to them being able to focus on what's important? Yeah, everyone is different. So when I work with every client, even in my workshop setting, which I'm mm -hmm. going to you know, start in March, I start with everyone one on one individually so I can see where they're at, how they think, how do they remember things? You know, are they kinesthetic? Are they visual? Are they audio? How do they learn things? Right. And then I look at their environment and we set a course for what's going to be the biggest impact for them. Now, obviously, this workshop, the Get It Gone, is all about papers and paper file management, but you know what everybody needs that. But it goes a lot deeper as far as, okay, how are your, how's your, how's your workspace set up? You know, yeah. where is your, where's your file cabinet? Where's the drawer? What's in your drawers? <laughs> right, exactly. Oh my God. Whenever I work in corporate environments, I just, I love every single time. I just love it because the main file drawer down to their left. That's yeah. supposed to have files in it. Guess what it has in it, Stacey? Can you guess? Piles of junk. Just things they just threw in probably, right? Candy. No, get out of here. Candy, <laughs> treats, and sweets are in the main million dollar real estate. Seriously, every time I'm like, I bet you I know what's in that drawer. And then sure enough, yeah, it's your little stash of sugar. Oh my God, it's, I can't believe that. 
it's funny. It happens like 80% of the time. So, you know, you have to watch out for your million dollar real estate and your million dollar real estate is like what's surrounding you, what's in the drawers right there that you can grab real quickly. You know, what about your bookcase? What about the things that you need? Where's your pens? Do you have scissors? So having uh, having that set up in advance allows you to really get stuff done because uh, I don't know if you're familiar, but the average, okay, the average corporate employee, when they get up to go away, yeah, they're gone about eight minutes. Now, if you're a home-based employee, which, you know, home-based entrepreneurs are my jam, guess mm -hmm. how long we're gone if we get up and leave? Oh, I, I think it's a longer period of time because they probably get distracted and, and they do one activity after another. And before you know it, the time just flew by and they probably killed, I would say, at least 45 minutes to two hours, right? <laughs> well, you know, that that's probably true in many, many cases, but really it's 18 and a half minutes. Oh, no way. Oh. Really? You know, that's still the 20 minutes. That's still a third of an hour. And yeah. all you did was go to get paper or go to get coffee and you've got Fido, you know, saying, I got to take a walk. The fridge is calling you. Yeah. Um, so still a third of an hour is a lot when you're just trying to get maybe a ream of paper for your printer or whatever it was right. you got up and left for. So that's why the million dollar real estate is so important to have everything kind of right there yeah. so that yeah. you can focus and not have to get up and leave. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, wow. <laughs> so your webinar, like, what are you going to be teaching people? So if they come to your webinar, what are some of the things that they'll learn from you? I'm going to talk about the three main productivity problems that I see, the big challenges that entrepreneurs face. And, you know, the first is paper distractions, which we've already talked about a lot, like, you right. know, Paper and distractions and piles just don't happen. Another thing is contact databases that are fighting against each other. You know, how do you actually put everything together so that everybody's there and labeled properly so that you have the categories set up right. um, so that your phone is syncing with your computer and that kind of thing. That's very, very important, especially as an entrepreneur. You want to be able to find the people that yeah. you want to find quickly. And again, not go off into the ether is trying to find someone and then surfing websites and all that good stuff, <laughs> which, which happens. Oh, and, then, and then the other, and speaking of time, another is about calendaring. You know, how do you handle your schedule on a day-to-day -day basis and a week-to-week -week basis? Right. Um, I use a system called umbrella in each day with an intention. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you can have a planning day, a project day, a meeting day. So you kind of have to have your week kind of laid out for yourself. Yeah. And I, I go into a lot about that. Like, how do you manage your time most effectively? And everybody's different too. That's what I love about my job is we yeah. all have different goals and different ways to think about things and different mannerism, different styles. Yeah. But it's yeah. like marrying your style to a schedule that's going to work for you. Right. Right. That's super important. And a lot of people just go throughout their work week and things happen to them and they put it in their schedule, but they don't really have foresight to think, oh no, I should be doing a project that day or I'm going to be out that day. Why not do outside appointments that day and kind of group things together? And again, doing that umbrella system, which I, I, I talk a lot about. Yeah, I, I think that happens a lot, I would think. Yeah, life happens to us instead of uh, through us and us helping it, you know, us making it happen. Um, if you don't have planning in advance, then life just kind of happens to you. Oh yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Now yeah. you you've written three books as well on on similar topics that you, we've just discussed. Can you tell me about those three books? Oh sure. My very first book that I wrote was is called How to Master Your Muck, Add Space to Your Life, Get Organized, Live Your Purpose, and that was designed. I've been a I've been an entrepreneur for thirty years, uh, solopreneur. So that book is written to help people create systems within their business that we all need, which is about goal setting. You know, looking looking the part. Uh, everything we've been talking about here, basically. Yeah. That's that's that uh, How to Master Your Muck. And then my second book that I wrote is Home Organization, The Smart Guide, Make Room for Yourself in Your Home. Right. And that basically is all about creating space for yourself so that you have a Zen environment so that you can actually come home and relax and not have all these projects niggling at you. And right. it basically helps people get organized from their front door to their back door. Uh, both of those books have corresponding online programs, online courses, oh. uh, on-demand courses that they can actually take to go further, where I have videos, 
uh, video explanations, tutorials, checklists, worksheets to kind of, the whole idea is where do you want to start? What do you want to accomplish? And then I, I give the roadmap for them to get there. Oh, and nice. That's, that's super important. Um, I've co-authored several other books. Uh, Heart of Women in Business is one. Um, uh, I work for Jerry Baker's Clan the Clutter. That was really hilarious. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Baker's a character. Um, so there's, you know, there's several other projects, but mainly I've been really focusing on my online programs so that I can affect more people uh, on a greater scale. Right. So, you know, with COVID, everybody shifts, right? So, oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So I had, you know, I'd been making all these products and never really had time to get out there and market them. And then, uh, you know, that was a blessing for me that I had the time yeah. and the resources to actually put out all my products and say, here they are, you know, this is what you need. And now I do online coaching all across the world, which is amazing, you know, for oh, clients wow. in many different uh, countries, because now we're all online. We're so used to being online virtual now. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. And a lot of people are working from home now. And if you're, if you're working from home, it's important, I would think to have an organized office because sometimes, you know, people will just square off a little area, but then if they're not organized, they kind of get distracted with everything around them, you know? Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, the, the great, you know, flee, there's so many women who have quit their jobs and they're launching and yay for yeah. you, you know, launch, launch, launch. That's what we need is more women entrepreneurs, right? But, you know, you have to think, and, and it helps to think about the systems that are going to support you as you go about your day-to-day -day business. Right. Because without right. systems, you're what I call it being stuck in busyness. Yeah. And you're not getting down to business, right? You know, you're, you're busy, busy, busy doing all this stuff, but it doesn't really lead you towards your big goals and your big dreams and your aspirations. And I find a lot of women that have left corporate, they don't think about their landscape of their office because yeah. it used to, they used to walk in, sit down and it was there. Right. They had the file cabinet right by them. They had the drawers right by them. And when they start a home office, maybe they don't have that. Uh, even capability. Maybe they're trying to steal a corner of the den to do mm -hmm. their business. So there's all sorts of systems that I've created over the years and help clients, you know, from rolling carts, that's their, their portable office that they can jam right into the hall closet at the end of the day. Right. There, there's all sorts of ways that you can get better organized, no matter what space you have. Because I've seen people, they, you know, they just, they square off a little area, but it's, so, the area is so busy. Like I've seen people like, you know, they'll make their office in their kitchen, they'll work on their kitchen table, but there's so much going on, you know, that I could think, I would think it could be easily, you know, uh, distractive to a person. Absolutely. I have people, you know, if, if they have to steal a corner, steal a corner and face away from the room. <laughs> yeah, that's a and good idea. You know, you just have to do what you have to do, you know, put up a screen. Um, I, you know, I have put people into closets for their office, mm -hmm. you know, the two door closets, you can actually yes. make that into an office, right? You can make a perfect office space out of it, you know, open up the door, roll in your chair, and there you are, and you're kind of in your own focused area, where right. you can actually get down to business. So a lot of people think they don't have the space, but there's always somewhere they can squirrel away and make right. it make a productive workspace for themselves. I think people don't also realize that they have a lot of junk, how much junk they actually have until they start actually going through it. And then they realize some of this stuff is so outdated and old and they do they really need it? Not really, you know, but they haven't taken the time to actually learn how to go through it, you know. Now, is mm -hmm. there is there a way that you teach people how to do it in a in a quicker way so they don't get um you know is, is it time oriented baby steps or is there a way that if they they can you know learn how to organize and, and do it quickly to get themselves to one one point to the next point? Well, uh, what I love about that question is, well, first off, I'm at, I'm at Dada S. There's no one way to do anything. But mm -hmm. what I tell people is start small. Letting go is a muscle, okay? Yeah. So most of our letting go muscles are atrophied, quite honestly, in the United right. States. We don't learn how to let go. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So start with, I, this is what I tell everybody all the time. If you have never organized yourself and you want to tackle a project and like feel accomplished and, and start that letting go, start with your sock drawer. Ah, really? Organize your socks. 
Now, there's a couple reasons for this. First reason is most of us are not that emotionally invested in our socks. Now, right. I have met a couple who are. <laughs> there's always a few out there. You know, yes. they're like sock people. But start with your sock drawer and, and you know, dump it out. Get rid of all the Lucy's, figure out, you know, what you need, what you don't need, what, who, if there's holes, get rid of them, start with right. your sock drawer, organize them. I like to organize mine by whites and, and colors, you know, it just makes yeah. it easier, but, but start there and make sure that all of your socks can fit in one space. Right. So the idea behind getting organized is you have a confined contained amount of space. Yeah. Now that amount of space is up to you. You decide how much is too much for socks? <laughs> right, exactly. Right? Find the drawer that fits that space and put your socks back in there nice and neat, you know, organize them any way you want. Uh, right. Some people like to do by season or whatever, but start there. If you can get that sock drawer organized, yeah. you're just going to love opening it and looking at it. And now you're going to feel like success. Yes. And when you feel success, you have inspiration. Yeah. And when you have inspiration, you're ready to do step two. Right. Which might be not your jeans. Okay. Those are humiliating. It could be something like uh, t-shirts or it could be something like, let's go into the desk drawer of our, you know, the junk drawer of our desk, which right. is always one. <laughs> <laughs> let's start there. Let's eliminate everything that we don't need there and create order. So right. it's just step by step, small little, uh, small little wins yeah. end up being a very large, big bonus at the end. But it takes time and yeah. you got to be willing to take time. I always say organizing is easy, but it's not simple. Right. I'm sorry. It's simple, but it's not easy right. because you have to dedicate yourself to actually doing it with the process. That's why actually people hire pro organizers because yeah. my clients are always looking at me saying, well, I could do this on my own, but I won't unless you're here. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Let's just, let's do it. Right. That's why group training programs are so cool because uh, the the one that I have coming up, it's in a group mm -hmm. and we celebrate and we have prizes and uh, we actually talk a lot about how do you celebrate your successes? Because yeah. what I found out from my life personally is I would, when I published my book, I became an Amazon, Amazon bestseller. I didn't even stop to celebrate. That was like silly. Right. So now I'm really focusing on celebrations. And so yeah. throughout the training, we celebrate, we have Amazon gift cards. And then because people are working it together, they have accountability partners. Right. And they're like, you know, did you do that last week before the next class? You know, yeah. let's talk. And it helps to have people on your side doing the same thing that you're doing. It makes you much more motivated and inspired to keep going. Oh, because you're definitely. not on it alone. Yes, I agree. And I think it's nice when you have a community of people working for this towards the same goal, because then also people give you their input, you know, and you, they might have an idea that you didn't even think about. And, and, you know, if you incorporate that idea into what you're doing, it might make things easier for you. It might even help you out, you know, along the way. And, you know, cause everyone has a different perspective, but when you see people giving you constructive criticism from outside the box, you could really learn a lot, I think. Right. I think so. And the group collaboration is key. You know, I, I love questions. The reason I love questions is because if someone asks it, there's like three other people that thought the same question, but right. were afraid to, to voice it. Yes. So uh, I love that. In fact, during the training, we have Voxer, which is a group chat. I and love people Voxer. Can ask, oh, I love Voxer. <laughs> people can ask me questions 24 seven and I yeah. can just answer and, and it's all group chat or they can go private. Sometimes they right. want to do a couple private questions, but generally in the group chat, it's like a blast because people are like, Oh, I was wondering that same thing. And then what about this part? And then we'll just answer that. So right. uh, the group collaboration, I think we learn so much more and we get inspired yeah. When we see other people making progress, you know, yes. it's, it's inspiring. It's like, oh, they did that. Okay. I can do that too. Right. Right. And, you know, some people think, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. But then when they see other people doing it and they, they're in the same boat as you and they're pretty much, you know, you know, they have either, they have a career going, they have, they're, you know, in, in corporate or they're outside working from their home, but they're getting all this stuff done. It's like, wow. And then you could say, well, how did you do that? Because I don't have the time for that. And then a person will shoot out an idea. I'm like, 
wow, you know, I didn't think about that, you know? Absolutely love it. That That's what that I really, really am loving group training, group workshops and uh, group collaboration. It's just a blast. And and we feed off of everybody's energy, right? So yeah. you know, I'm a people person anyhow. So give me a group makes me all happy. Yeah, I I love when when we I work in groups and there's so many people, you know, going towards one, you know, common goal, but you know, everyone, you know, is shooting out questions and everyone, you know, is interacting with each other and giving positive answers and trying to help each other. I I I just get so energized by that. I love hearing what other people have to say because it helps me actually learn, you know, and I I, I grow from that. Yeah, we grow from other people's mistakes. We grow from other people's uh, wins. Yes. We grow from other people in general. I mean, that's, you know, we're human beings. We love uh, being among other humans, right? Yes. It's fun stuff. Uh, even those who say that they're, you know, isolation, they still need people. Yeah. Um, and so that's fantastic. Yeah. And what happens at the end of the six week uh, workshop, if they decide that they want to jump into it, every single paper in their life is organized and either chucked which is why it's called the get it going formula or <laughs> filed. Okay. And so they are able to turn their papers into profits because the only papers that they have left in their life are ones that they need, that they use, that yes. they can grab very quickly. Yes. Yes. You know, I was going through some papers. I had them piled and I, I actually had papers from 2016 and I was like, oh my God, they were all the way on the bottom. And, you know, because I, I, you know, I go through when things start to get a little high, you know, I'm like, okay, it's time to do a spring cleaning, you know, and I, I start to go through it and like all the way on the bottom was like, there was a paper from 2016. I'm like, Stacy, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> you know, it's just, it gets lost in the paper, you know, you don't realize it you know, and uh, it, it it helps to, to, you know, to, to do stuff and to clean. And, and when I see things so well organized, I, like I was telling you earlier, I feel so well focused, you know, and I, I have clarity and I'm very productive when everything, all the clutter is gone, you know, and I see when the, when it starts to, anything starts to pile up, I have to just take time no matter when, and just, you know, do a little by little, and what a difference I feel like when it, when you, when you go from clutter to declutter and your organization, time management, clarity, productiveness, it all ties in with one another. It's, you know, it, it really, it, it, it affects your mental capacity. You know, you it mentally, when things are too, too unorganized, it's very hard, I think, for anybody to be well-organized and to be success, you know, it, if you're unorganized to be successful, because it's just too much stuff all over the place, don't you think? Absolutely. And that's why the the main word that I hear is overwhelm, overwhelm, yeah. overwhelm, overwhelm, right? Because yes. it's just too much. Yeah. So, you know, you need to simplify the landscape of your life in all areas. You know, let's simplify your schedule. Let's simplify your workspace. Let's simplify your database. You know, let just yeah. make, get it down to the basics that you need and, and don't have too much of anything. Right. Um, right. I have a, one of my best friends in the world is a nutritionist. And every time I ask her, you know, what, what do you think? Should I eat this or should I? And she's like, like Kathy, it's all in moderation. Yes. <laughs> That's always what you get every single time. It drives me bonkers, but it's true. It's, it's true. like everything in moderation. <laughs> it's very true. It's very true. Now you have a lot of stuff on your websites. Can you tell people some of the stuff that you have on your website? And well, you know, if they've come visit you, you know, what they can, you know, see there. Oh yeah, absolutely. If you go to organizedandenergized.com, okay, organizedandenergized.com, uh, the first thing you'll find is a free report that you can download that will uh, give you six steps to amaze to organize your amazing home office. So you can start there and that's just a freebie little report. It actually shows you six, six steps to do it. Um, and then if you go further, you'll find on my blog, I write all the time uh, articles. But if you go to the shop page, you're going to find the books, you're going to find the companion uh, online courses that go with them. Um, home office organization is the sister to the How to Master Your Muck book. Um, home organizing made simple is the sister to my home organizing the smart guide. Uh, there's also the seven steps to financial organizing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people when they now this is what's cool, Stacey, every time people get organized, they find money. 
every <laughs> single time. If it's a gift card or if it's an uncashed check or whatever. When I'm, my client right now is in the winning lead of everything. So far, we found about $87,000. <laughs> no. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> a really, really busy woman who just didn't have time. Um, anyhow, yeah, that's that's the leader so far. I'm working with her right now. Um, but we always find money. So, uh, you know, finding financial, uh, getting getting your finances organized are great. Another thing about, and then you'll find uh, many, many other courses and books and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But what I wanted to say about uh, getting your papers organized is that when you go, why I do this in March is because by the time uh, taxes are due, you're ready to go to tax. Excellent so idea. All your receipts are filed, You they're categorized, you know what to tell your CPA, and you can actually go to tax without having to do an extension. Right. So that's, that's what I find a lot of uh, people, they file extensions all the time simply because they can't get it together enough uh, to get what they need for the CPA, you know, right. especially if you're a home-based business, you know, how are you tracking your receipts? You know, how are you tracking expenses and income, um, that kind of thing. So the actual, the freedom filer system that people go on to actually gets them to do that. So yeah, they actually yeah. organize their receipts. That's an excellent idea. That is an excellent idea. I like that. Now we need it. We do need it. We do need it. And so, you know, it's, it's only natural to get, you know, disorganized. I think at, at some point everybody gets disorganized because, it, you know, there's so much going on on a, on a daily basis that, you know, it's hard to keep up with everything. We only have, you know, so many hours in a day and, you know, our energy level can only last for so long. And I think it's, it's, it's hard sometimes to, to stay, you know, organized all the time. But if you do have a protocol, if you do have a, a method of becoming organized, you could always get back on track because you know what to do, how to do it. And you can, you know, always put yourself back on track if you know the right steps on how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about step one, step two, step three, and staying, keep that linear focus. I mean, I'm right now, I moved uh, New Year's Eve and I still have a couple boxes over here in my office because I haven't even had a chance to get the, you know, it's been like an ongoing process of yeah. let's organize the whole house, right? You have to yeah. do it in baby steps. And, yeah. and we all have something that needs to get organized, even organizers, you know, right. um, when I, uh, when I was moving a, a, a few years back, about a decade ago, I actually hired my friend, a professional organizer to come in and help me purge my shoes because I have known shoe issues. Right? <laughs> you know, how many shoes does one girl need? It really helps to have someone talk you through it yeah. and walk you through the letting go process. That's one of my problems. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, women, we like our shoes and you know, I, you know why we like our shoes? Because our size doesn't change very much. We right. can go up and down on the scale and our shoes are still true, tried and true, right? Yes. They, yes. Don't, they still always look fabulous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike some of the shirts or jeans that we might have in our closet that just are humiliating, right? Right. So, exactly. Uh, yeah. So shoes are a thing. But yeah. So, you know, I, masters hire masters. You know, I'm not ashamed to say I've no. hired many coaches over the years to, to mm -hmm. train me. I've hired other pro organizers to help me where I can't make my own decisions. Yeah. And it, it's what we do. I mean, the yeah. most successful people in the world hire other mentors. I'm sure oh, you have too. You probably have a line of people who you help. I actually do actually. <laughs> For sure. I mean, that's what we do. We do, we hire people to do what we cannot do. We mm -hmm. hire people to see what we can't see. Yes. And we hire people to say to us what we will not say to ourselves. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because I, I think like, the, the truth real. sometimes hurts. Yeah. You know, and we don't want to hear it, but when someone else says it, it's like, yeah, I guess I do have to do this now. Yeah, you know, but we do. I, you know, I have a whole line of coaches and people who help me and I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for other people helping me. You, you need help, you know, no human being can do it all on their own and you need people to kind of sometimes hold your hand and pull you through, you know, and, and the job gets done and it gets done well. Well, that's why you're so successful, Stacey, is because you know that and you mm -hmm. do that. 
And I think that that's what, you know, as entrepreneurs, when we start out, we're thinking, I can't afford that. I can't afford to have help. I can't, you know, I, we're into that, that mode. And really yeah. it's like, you can't afford not to. Right. Because if exactly. you want to grow quickly, um, you know, like you have, like your business is rocking <laughs> because you've called on people to help you and you've realized that I can't do everything. I can't be everything. Right. You know, put up the little help sign. <laughs> That's very true. A hundred percent. Now, if you had to give people, you know, a couple tips, you know, on how to get going, you know, they, they see, they have all the clutter, they see, they need help. You know, what would you say to them? What tips would you get, you know, give them to kind of help them to get started, to get them on their way? Add space to your life. Mm -hmm. So start where you can start getting rid of stuff. Right. If, well, one thing that I do all the time and I'll never give it up. I have a donation station. I have two in my house. Okay. I have my master closet and one in my hall closet. Yes. So when I'm operating through my life on a daily basis and I find something that I no longer use, need or love, I take it immediately to my donation station. Right. So literally it's a box in my master, in my master closet. It's a box in the hall closet. Yes. So start adding space and eliminating all the stuff that you see, you're going to go through life right after this, walk yeah. through your house and, and look and grab everything that you don't use, need or love. There's going to be a lot laying around yes. and yes. throw it into a box. So exactly. set up a donation station within your house is the number one. Uh, I will never not have one, right. especially in my master closet, because I can try on something. And if I'm like, oh, I just don't. Like throw it in the box. If yes. I don't throw it in the box and I put it back on the hanger, then I have to talk myself out of it again. Right. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> so just throw it in the box and forget yes. about it. And when the box gets full, take it to your local donation station, you know, whoever that is, Goodwill or somebody, you know, wherever. Right. Um, also get to know where your donation station is. Where's the yeah. closest one to your house? Exactly. Because make friends with it. Know where it is. When your box gets full, you know, and, and what you can do is you can set up a, a goal for yourself. Hey, I'm going to get rid of one box a week of stuff. Yes. Donate it. Okay. Exactly. And what I love about the whole donation situation, obviously, if it's a junk trash it, but yes, yes. what you give comes back tenfold always. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. So get rid. So as you're thinking of something is like, oh, I don't need that. And oh, but maybe then think oh, I'm going to pass this good on. And what I need is going to come back to me times 10, because right. guess what? It always happens that way. It always does. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I so do it myself the, too. And it the works. big thing is, is exercise that letting go muscle. That's, yes. that's step one. You know, if you have to learn how to let go, Right. Once you know how to let go with having your donation station set up and you're, you're filling your boxes, start giving yourself a goal. I'm going to get rid of a box a week, which is four boxes a month. That's a yeah, lot. That's a lot. You can do it. You, it. It's easy. Like once it's set up, like I can look at a couple of things right here. It can go, go, yeah. go away. Organizing is an ongoing process. That's the whole kicker. People think that you're done, done and done, but you never are because we are collectors of things. We love to buy and shop yes. and shiny objects. So mm -hmm. you need to start, you know, letting go as much as you bring things in yeah. and or more. And then you can live a sim simple, more minimalistic life right. and you can increase your focus and decrease your overwhelm. So when you're overwhelmed, your brain is just shut down anyhow and you're not doing anything of any import. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And you become a, pro a procrastinator and it, because, you know, you're just too overwhelmed to actually focus on what's important, you know, yeah. I think so. Yeah. And when you have space, you have clarity back to that yes. space, clarity, clarity, purpose, purpose, success, right? So 100%. just start chucking the stuff, chucking that junk out of your life. That's, you know, that's the main thing that we as professional organizers do is we help people determine what's serving us. And, yes. and then here's the thing too, is it serving you now? Right. Because I listen to self-talk and I listen to talks like, well, I used to, yeah. okay, it's no longer appropriate in your life or I might, yeah. okay, so your future pacing or your back pacing instead of like, I love it. 
Yeah. It's like, cool. Well, why is it in your garage? Let's bring it into the house. If you love it, it deserves a place in your house. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And if I might need it, just let it go. You haven't yeah. needed it. it. You know, that's, you don't need it now. That's why right. you're talking in the future. Exactly. Uh, right. So start listening to what you say to yourself. That's why I think pro organizers are so effective because we can really, mo- we're objective observers, right? Yes. So we can observe how the person is speaking. Are they speaking yes. in past, present, or future? Present is the optimum thing, right? We want to yes. be present. Mm-hmm. We don't want to be backward or forward facing. That's right. And, and the stuff in our environment takes us there. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. hundred percent. A hundred percent. So you, you've been a world of, of positive information. I, I love what you do and uh-huh. it, you know, you, you, your ideas are true. They're just unbelievable. I, I, you know, so many people struggle with organization, but your methods are just unbelievable. They're so they're, you know, they're so constructive. And I think if people actually, you know, follow through with what you're advising, they'll see a big difference in their life, you know? And I, you know, I, I encourage people to, to go on your website and to check out all your, you know, information and especially for your, your webinar, you know, tell everybody one more time where they can find that webinar. Okay. You can go to get it gone I believe that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, definitely go to my website, but uh, we'll put the link below. I'm almost sure it's getitgoneformula.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, they keep changing my URL, but that's the name of the webinar. So you can also Google that and find me, find it. Uh, it is March 14th at 10 a.m. Pacific, and mm-hmm. it's free. All you have to do is register. And once you register it, I'll send you reminders because I know how life happens. Yeah. <laughs> you get reminders right up to, you know, the minute that it starts. And it's just an hour and you're going to learn a lot of good takeaways of what you can actually implement uh, to get things done so yeah. that you can, uh, you know, move forward and have more success. A hundred percent. I love that. I love that. And before we go, can you tell people one more time your website so that it sticks in their head? Yes, it's organized and energized. And that's what I'm all about. So if you're organized, you are energized. A hundred percent. Yes. If you're not energized, you might be looking around your environment and think, hmm, maybe I'm not quite organized. Because when you're organized, you are energized. And that's what it's all about. Oh, a hundred percent. That energy to do the stuff that you really want to do. You know, not the stuff that's just busy, busy stuff. Yes, a hundred percent. Thank you so much, Kathy, for being on the show. I, I love, I love this whole topic and I think it's going to help a lot of people, you know, and thank you once again for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Stacey. I love your show and I love your work that you do as well. So thank you doing a lot of good things for people out there. And that's what, you know, us women entrepreneurs keep going, you know, we need more of us because we're in the healing you know, we are yes. all about healing and communication. So the more of us that are out there as entrepreneurs, the better the world's going to be for sure. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, we bring empowerment. We bring the energy to actually, you know, want change to become our ideal self and to become our ideal self. We have to, we have to work in baby steps to the goal, the goals that we really want. And you, you can't have those goals and you can't be successful if you have a, a office full of clutter or if you have a house full of clutter. So, you know, let's start, like you said, baby steps. Let's get, <laughs> let's get de- declutterized. Let's start organizing and then let's work towards a common goal. What do you want in life? You know, what's your ideal, you know, definition of success and, you know, work towards that. And it all goes back to being organized and having everything in place and your, your, your room, your office, your life, everything has to be organized so you could see clearly what you really want in life. So thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, I really appreciate it. And uh, good luck to all you out there who are listening and watching. Go ahead, grab a box, fill that box up. You'll feel really, really good by the time it's done. (laughs) I agree. A hundred percent. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Okay. Take care. Thanks, Dave. Bye-bye.